arriving at a diagnosis of multicentric Castleman's disease is more challenging than it may initially appear. Uh, I think many providers are used to thinking about receiving a classic histopathologic diagnosis uh, from a pathologist in the setting of a constellation of clear clinical symptoms and then making a diagnosis of multicentric Castleman's disease. But in reality, it's not quite that simple. The clinical symptoms of Castleman's disease can be very diverse and can mimic almost every other uh, condition. So having fevers, enlarged lymph nodes, and fatigue can be a symptom of the flu, can be a symptom of lymphoma, can be a symptom of almost any inflammatory disease. So the symptoms can be very diverse. Um, the the uh, laboratory abnormalities that are often seen accompanying Castleman's disease would include things like anemia, uh, thrombocytopenia, elevations in liver function tests, and certainly um, elevations in inflammatory biomarkers like the C-reactive protein or the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So these things help to build a case, the symptoms that a patient presents with and the uh, blood tests and radiographs, usually CAT scans that show enlarged lymph nodes, those all can help to um, bolster uh, support for a diagnosis of Castleman's disease, which can then be augmented by findings on histopathology. Um, however, the, the, there is no pathognomonic finding on pathology. So uh, while we all um, may remember Castleman's disease from our medical textbooks as something that produces these classic looking lymph nodes with onion skinning or other very extreme and unique histologic appearances, the fact of the matter is, is that there actually are a number of conditions that can cause uh, that appearance pathologically. So uh, lupus can cause something like that. Syphilis can cause something like that. So uh, the lymph node appearance in, under the microscope is not sufficient to make a diagnosis of Castleman's disease. That becomes much more specific when it's added to the clinical signs and symptoms um, that a patient presents with. But even with that constellation of symptoms and the histopathologists doing their best and the hematopathologists doing their best to make an, a diagnosis, it's not definitive. There are certainly things that, in my experience, um, help to solidify that diagnosis. Um, so uh, I would say that um, in the absence of an elevated inflammatory biomarker of the C-reactive protein or the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, it would be very unusual, regardless of anything else, to have multicentric Castleman's disease. Um, beyond that, I would say that um, oftentimes uh, clinicians will look for evidence for elevated interleukin-6 in the plasma, and I think that that has a good positive predictive value. If it's very elevated, then I think its chances are likely that you could have Castleman's disease, but a poor negative predictive value. We know that there are patients in whom you can't detect interleukin-6 in the peripheral blood that still have the disease, so not a perfect test. And another thing that I think may give um, evidence towards having a diagnosis of Castleman's disease is the detection of one of the viruses that causes it, human herpes virus 8. So the, uh, the gold standard would be the detection of human herpes virus 8 in the lymph node by immunohistochemistry. But there are other ways you can solidify that diagnosis, like quantifying the virus from the plasma in the peripheral blood with a polymerase chain reaction. Patients with multicentric Castleman's disease, in my experience, um, often are, uh, uh, there's a delay in diagnosis of months to years. Um, the most typical um, presentation that I hear in my patients once they've finally arrived at a diagnosis is that for preceding months, or in one case up to 20 years, there is a gradual decline of function characterized by increased fatigue, uh, sometimes depression, joint pain, uh, rashes, and sweats and that that is very indolent. It can be very slow and grow slowly year after year after year. Um, so in extreme cases, that process is so slow that it may take 20 years uh, to make a definitive diagnosis of Castleman's disease once someone is actually prompted to really go for full workup and uh, you know, biopsy and whatnot. On the other hand, um, uh, there are patients who have been completely normal, asymptomatic, and present to the emergency department in fulminant multi-organ system failure, seemingly with a new diagnosis of Castleman's disease. Did those patients have a smoldering course where perhaps they had lymph nodes that were enlarged but they hadn't noticed them? It's certainly possible. But I think that um, certainly in my experience there have been patients who have been within the medical system, they've been having routine annual physicals, totally normal, and then one day just all of a sudden present with symptoms. So I think it's very variable. Uh, the amount of time that patients can present um, between initial symptoms and actual diagnosis.